Hey everyone, to say that Elden Ring has got its hooks in me and isn't letting go would be a massive understatement. The game has absolutely been consuming me ever since it came out. It's pretty much the only game I think about, it's pretty much the only game I wanna play. This is a game and experience I'm going to be fondly playing and cherishing for many years to come. This is going to be sort of a review slash initial thoughts uh, of Elden Ring. Currently I am like nine episodes into my playthrough but I'm a lot further in in terms of recording so I got a good couple of dozen hours in. Yeah just think of this as sort of my impression since everybody is asking me what I think of the game this is going to be the definitive video where I answer those questions. And to put it lightly, this game is simply amazing and certainly hasn't disappointed. Back when this game was still sort of in the absence phase, there was a long period of time where we heard nothing about Elden Ring. I said that I hope the hype the community has built around Elden Ring before anything came out in terms of what the gameplay was going to be like won't result in disappointment. Amazingly, it did not. Uh, this game is one of the few games I've ever experienced where the game itself not only lived up to the usual hype, it lived up to the community's generated hype as well. And you know, I was sort of not critical of Elden Ring, but I was apprehensive. I have to say, I have to eat those words uh, and say that I was completely wrong. This game is as grandiose and is as hype and as good as the community imagined it would be, which frankly is absolutely amazing. It manages to completely translate the Souls experience into an open world game. And man, what an open world it is. Honestly, I like open world games sometimes, with a caveat. I'm not gonna say I'm like the biggest fan of them, I'm not the type where I pick up every fucking Ubisoft massive online game and go through everything in the game world. I do like an open world when it's done correctly. And you know, initially I was worried that Elden Ring was gonna be open world just for the sake of being open world. Open world is kind of the meta right now when it comes to games. Uh, it's basically, I think, the easiest way to put in some like grandiose map, which, you know, they do tend to look very good in AAA games and just absolutely fill them to the brink with a million useless, boring, grindy activities. It really is the trend. Slapping an open world on everything is what's going on nowadays. Well, let me tell you, Elden Ring is absolutely not that. The map is actually filled with meaningful events and activities which are completely up to you to discover. Really, only the main quest and locations you discover are marked. Everything else you have to discover yourself and mark on the map. And remember and explore and all that. This really is in sharp contrast and you guys have probably seen that famous sort of meme image floating around uh, on what Elden Ring would look like if it was designed by any other major AAA publisher. Well, the game is absolutely not that. With the map being as thoughtful as it is, and you being forced to actually remember and mark things, it really does harken back to some old school RPGs and old school sort of like Final Fantasy games and all that, where you really had to keep the map in mind. The second thing that really makes the open world a joy to play through is that the enemies are actually laid out in a thoughtful way. There aren't just like random mobs dumped everywhere. There are actually thoughtful places for the enemies, the mobs which are present make sense for the actual locations, and the enemies have interesting formations and setups which forces you to play differently, you can use stealth, you can go in, you can play however you want. This extends to the open world bosses as well, which happen to be just as interesting as the actual main bosses. It really is something. I think I've heard, and again, I try to avoid spoilers as much as I can, but you know, you see some stuff that there's like, think, 77 bosses in this game. And so far, most of them have been very good. Sure, the dungeon bosses, obviously they are sort of second tier, but the open world bosses and the main bosses I've fought so far have been excellent. 
Aside from that, the gameplay does stick closest to Dark Souls 3. However, whereas I felt I didn't always fully enjoy the gameplay loop of Dark Souls 3, somehow the same formula translates really well for Elden Ring. I think the gameplay elements carried over from Sekiro help a lot with this, i.e. the stealth, the jumping, these are mechanics that really enhance the experience and again allow you more ways of playing. One of my issues with Dark Souls 3 was that really rolling around and flipping around like an idiot was basically the only way to play, especially in the later bosses and the DLC bosses. Here you can use a shield, the shield is actually viable with the new moves. You can use the stealth, you have the jumping and the aerial attacks, so you have a lot more avenues to use in combat. Overall, to sum up and not drag this video out too long, I am having a fantastic time with this game right now and I honestly cannot recommend it enough. I am sure that as time progresses and the sort of initial wonder wears off, me and probably the rest of the community as well will see and find some faults with this game. No game is perfect, no Souls game, no From Software game is perfect. Certainly the performance issues which are being addressed but were still present uh, in the PC version of the game are not acceptable for a game of this caliber and criticizing the game for having bad performance when it came out is a completely fair and valid criticism. I'm playing on PS5 which is a little bit shielded from that although even the PS5 version does suffer from some pop-ins, some frame rate drops and etc. However, I can confidently say that this is one of the best games I've played in a long while. It is, I think, already a very, very strong contender for Game of the Year. This is one of those rare games where, again, I am completely consumed by it. Even when I'm not playing, I'm thinking about it. It's a game where I absolutely cannot wait to jump back in, and whenever I finish a recording slash play session, I'm never left feeling disappointed. I can only say, if you have a chance to play Elden Ring, play it, do it. If you are intimidated by the Souls game formula, believe me, don't be. This game, I would say, is actually very accessible and way less intimidating than people make it out to be. There are plenty of guides and videos on YouTube and all over the internet on how to make your life easier in the game. Magic is extremely powerful. There are a ton of good shields. I would say that shields and heavy armor is better than ever in this game because it still offers you quite a lot of mobility and the shields actually offer some tactical depth with the, uh, the counter mechanic. You don't have to be super good at parrying to really be advanced in the combat of Elden Ring. Trust me, if you stick with this game, it will eventually click. Like Dark Souls 2 did for me back in 2011 and believe me, after that you will be hooked and you will have a wonderful series of games to dive into. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video now. I think the time has come to jump back into Elden Ring for me, cause yeah, the game is there, it's waiting for me, time to record some more videos. So. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this review here. Thank you guys very much for watching. What are your thoughts on Elden Ring? Do you like the game? Do you not like the game? Uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below. And as always, like, comment and subscribe. Turn on post notifications for more Elden Ring content. Believe me, I'm pushing out the initial playthrough uh, to get to the ultimate guides as well because yeah, I'm hooked. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed again and peace out. Goodbye.